Everything we've been teaching you about the M1 rifle, sighting and aiming, positions, trigger squeeze, the whole course in marksmanship has been leading straight to the subject we're going to take up right now. Rapid fire exercises. But let me warn you right now about that word rapid. It does not mean taking just any position or hurrying your aim or jerking the trigger. It does not mean spraying bullets all over the landscape. Rapid fire means getting off well-aimed shots as fast as you can. It means firing as fast as you can fire accurately, no faster. The measure of your effectiveness in rapid fire is not shots per minute, but hits per minute. Remember that when you're on the range. And remember it when your target is a Jap or a German who's just as anxious to kill you as you are to kill him. Keep calm and hit what you're shooting at. Suppose you're in a supply detail that runs into an ambush. You've got to drop into position and get your shots off fast. But they won't do you any good unless they're well-aimed shots. Or suppose you're in a defensive position. All of a sudden, your enemy's in close, charging you from all sides. Your first impulse is to start blazing away wildly. You must not. Keep hold of yourself. You've got to shoot fast, but you've got to make every bullet count. Don't lose your head, even though hell's breaking loose all around you. Stay cool and shoot straight, and you'll live to tell your girl about it. Coolness in battle comes from confidence in yourself, and confidence comes only from hours of practice. Slow fire and rapid fire, over and over, with a stopwatch looking over your shoulder. We teach rapid fire in three positions. In the prone position, and in the sitting position, which are the best, and the kneeling position. The kneeling position is none too steady, but there are times when it comes in handy, and you'd better be ready for just about anything. We don't teach rapid fire in the standing position, however. It's not worth it. In the standing position, you're not properly balanced for accurate aiming at high speed. The first thing you've got to learn in rapid fire exercises is getting into the right firing position in a hurry. You're allowed to choose the position you're going to take and to mark it. For the prone position, drop to the ground, get set, and line up your sights on the target. Mark the points for your right and left elbows and the butt of the rifle. Then, keeping your feet in place, stand up. Hold the heel of the stock in your right hand. Now you're ready. At first, you practice getting into the prone position by the numbers. On the count of one, bend your knees to the ground and throw your weight back. On two, place the butt of your rifle on the ground at the spots you marked for it. At three, place your left elbow on its mark. At four, take the butt of the rifle off the ground and fit it into the hollow of your shoulder. At five, return your right hand to the small of the stock and drop your right elbow to the ground on the spot marked for it. Now immediately line up your sights on the target. Hold your breath, aim, take up the trigger slack and squeeze off the shot. Now, if your position is right, your rifle will naturally fall back on the target after each shot, and you can fire a whole clip with only slight pauses between to get your sights in perfect alignment. At first, you'll practice by the numbers so that your coach and instructors can check the accuracy of each position and movement. Take it by the numbers once more, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Ready position. One. Two. Three, four, five. 
Once you've learned it by the numbers, you'll practice against time so that you can check your progress, see how you're going. We start you slowly and speed you up gradually until you can take your position, aim, and get off your first shot in nine seconds. Here's how it goes in dry shooting. Watch how smoothly the five steps flow together into one continuous motion. Go ahead, Sergeant. Lock. Emulate load. Ready on the right. Ready on the left. Ready on the fire line. Target. Up. Time. Nine seconds doesn't sound like much time, but you've just seen that it's plenty for an experienced man. It won't be long before you'll melt smoothly into your prone position with seconds to spare to squeeze off your first shot. Naturally, the faster you get into a good position, the more time you've got to aim and fire. So, slip into position and then take your time to get an accurate aim and a careful squeeze on that trigger. A near miss in seven or eight seconds is no good. What you want is a bullseye in nine seconds. Try to get a smooth flow in every movement as you drop to the ground. Think of how it would look if every move were made very slowly. Target. Up. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Now hold your breath and take a careful aim. Six. Seven. Squeeze slowly and steadily on that trigger. Eight. Time. Every one of you can do it as easily as that if you remember this one point. Do it as fast as you can do it right. Never hurry your aim or your trigger squeeze. Now for the sitting position. First, take the correct position and try it out to be sure the rifle points naturally at the target. Then mark the places for your heels and your seat. Stand up in the marks for your heels. At the command targets up, drop quickly on the spot marked for your seat, breaking the fall with your right hand. There's another way of getting into the sitting position that you may find easier. After you've marked the places for your feet, cross your legs and rise. Stand with your legs crossed until the command target's up. Then bend your knees and sink to the ground. This is quicker than the other method, but it forces you to take your eyes off the target while you set your feet in the places marked for them. Otherwise, the action is the same. Place your left elbow. Hit the rifle butt into the hollow of your shoulder and complete your firing position. Hold your breath, aim, and squeeze off the shot. With practice, you'll be able to go from the ready to the sitting position and get off your first aim shot in seven seconds. Sergeant, let's see that against time. Lock. Simulate load. Ready on the right. Ready on the left. Ready on the fire line. Target. Up. Here, too, of course, the quicker you take the correct position, the more time you've got to squeeze off your shot. The exercise in the kneeling position is like the other two. You mark the places for your feet and your right knee and get up. On command, you lock, load, and stand ready. When you hear targets up, take the kneeling position you've marked, hold your breath, aim, and squeeze the trigger. With practice, you'll be able to go from the ready position to the kneeling position and get off your first shot in seven seconds. Target, up. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, time. I've said the place to save time in all three of these exercises is in taking your positions. But don't misunderstand me. That does not mean scrambling into the wrong position in a hurry. In rapid fire, just as in any other phase of rifle work, you've got to be in the correct position before you start to aim. After you've learned to take the three firing positions and squeeze off your first shot at the required speed, you're ready for the cadence exercise. The purpose of which is to develop a rhythm, a regular beat, at about three second intervals. For one thing, it's easier to work smoothly in a regular cadence. For another, on the range, you're allowed a limited time to take your position, fire your first clip, reload, and get off your second clip. And the three second interval will bring you out comfortably within the time allotted. We don't expect you to be able to do it all at once. We'll start you dry shooting at the rate of an aimed shot every five seconds. Then every four and a half. Then every four, which in dry shooting corresponds to three seconds on the range because the hand operation of the piece is slower than its actual operation in firing. Here again, the coach and pupil method is the best. The pupil simulates firing while the coach works the operating rod handle. To keep the bolt from being held in the open position when it is thrown back, the coach puts a small block of wood in the clip. There are several other ways to get the same result. But in this company, we find this method the easiest and the best. Your squad leaders will have a supply of these blocks and will issue them when they are needed. Let's take the exercise at five second intervals. Hammer down, coach is ready. Boom. Boom. As I said before, in these exercises, the coach is just about as important as the rifle. In the cadence exercises, when he forces back the operating rod handle, he acts as part of the rifle. In doing this, he must not lean against the handle. He strikes the handle sharply and immediately removes his hand so that the bolt can snap back into position. It's a good idea for the coach to wear a glove or wrap a handkerchief around his hand. Strike that operating rod handle a couple of hundred times if you want to know why. Bolt. Notice that the coach strikes the handle only bolt. when the command bolt is given by the instructor. But bolt. notice, too, that the command is given whether or not the rifleman has squeezed off his shot. Bolt. If the pupil is late, bolt. the coach does not operate the bolt, but waits for the next command after the pupil is fired. You'll do this exercise a minute at a time, in the prone, then in the sitting, then in the kneeling position, gradually speeding up the cadence until you're proficient. In cadence exercises, be sure to take the correct position so that your sights return oh. automatically to the aiming point after each shot. Keep your eye constantly oh. on the sight picture and squeeze that trigger with a oh. steadily increasing pressure until the hammer falls. Then keep your finger on the trigger for the next shot. Yes, I'll say it again. It's constant drill in speed and accuracy that makes the expert rifleman. But even constant drill won't do you any good unless you make each movement right every time. After you've learned to fire in cadence, you'll move on to two exercises in simulated rapid fire. For the first of these, you use the clip with the wooden block.
On the command targets up, you'll go from standing to the prone position and squeeze off your first shot in nine seconds. Then you'll get off each of the next seven rounds of your first clip at four second intervals. But there won't be anybody to call off these intervals for you. Your cadence exercise will have taught you the rhythm. When you hear eighth round, reload, you'll simulate reloading. And you'll have nine seconds to do it and squeeze off your ninth shot. Once again, four seconds each for the next seven rounds. When you hear last round, you'll still have five seconds extra before the command cease firing. This exercise is done in a total of 79 seconds. All right, let's see how it goes. Lock, simulate load. Ready on the right, ready on the left. Ready on the fire line. Target. Hup. Good. First round. The first shot should be fired Hup. in the first nine seconds. You've got four Three. seconds for each of the next seven shots. Four. shot should be off by the time you hear this. Eighth round, reload. But remember, you count your own shots. If you fired the eighth round before you hear reload, you don't have to wait. Ten. Reload immediately. Ten. Ten. Twelve. Ten. If you keep your fire rhythmical and steady, you'll get off your last shot just as it's called. Fifteen. Sixteen. Last round. If you don't, you still have five more seconds to finish up without hurrying. Eight. Firing. That's your first exercise in simulated rapid fire. But before we go on, there are several things I want to point out. In all of your rapid fire exercises, be sure to count your shots aloud as you heard Private Oss do just now. By counting the shots, you know exactly what's left in your clip, and you're ready to reload when you should, which saves time. But there's another reason. You've got to use the air in your lungs to call the number, and that forces you to breathe at just the right time. But uh, don't get the idea that counting aloud is just a training exercise. You'll call the numbers out in battle, too. And your reasons for doing it will be the same, but a whole lot stronger. In combat, knowing when to reload will save more than time. Getting caught with one round in your rifle when the enemy is coming at you is as good a way as any to put an end to your career. When you're firing, keep your eye on the target all the time. Don't look away. If you squeeze your trigger properly, the recoil will jerk your head up a little a little fall back with the rifle. And when you have to look away to reload, be sure you get back on the right target. On the range, the prettiest dead center five on the wrong target goes down on your score as a zero. And remember, the habits you're forming now are the ones you'll take with you into battle, where your target is hard to see and is easily lost. In dry runs, the command bolt is not given. The coach listens for the click of the hammer and strikes the operating rod handle back the second he hears it. When you simulate, or pretend, to load that second clip, don't hurry it. If you do, you'll only cheat yourself out of some valuable training. Don't do it as Private Oster is doing it now. That kind of exercise is worse than none because it creates bad habits. Go through your simulated reloading exactly as if you were handling a clip. 
A fumble in reloading, when you're firing for record, would knock your score into a cocked hat. That's your first exercise in simulated fire. And you'll practice it in the prone, sitting, and the kneeling positions. You're allowed a total of 79 seconds for the prone exercise, but only 74 seconds for the sitting and kneeling. Seven seconds instead of nine to take the position and fire the first round. Eight seconds instead of nine to reload. And three seconds extra instead of five at the end. Except for the positions and time, the sitting and kneeling exercises are exactly like the prone. The purpose is to teach you to keep the proper cadence, even though no one is calling bolt. Once you've learned this, you'll repeat the series using dummy rounds and no wooden block. The timing is the same and the performance is the same. But with dummy rounds, you must learn to load a fresh clip quickly. And that's a trick in itself. As you take the clip from your belt, grasp it at the base and near one edge between your thumb and forefinger. Then carry it forward, swinging it up until the bullets point forward. Place the clip in the receiver and slide your thumb forward along the top of it to the center of the cartridge. Double your fingers up out of the way. Raise your arm and press the clip down into the receiver until the clip latch engages. As you raise your thumb, the operating rod handle should snap forward. If it doesn't, strike it with the heel of your hand and your rifle is ready to be fired again. Here's how a trained rifleman reloads in the prone position. In the sitting position. And in the kneeling position. When you first do these exercises, you'll feel that 79 and 74 seconds are going to rush you. But there's plenty of time to get off those 16 shots. So don't try to beat the clock. That won't help you score. When you get on the range, you're scored on your hits. Don't get buck fever. The stopwatch is important, but don't let it push you around. Don't be in such a rush that you spray bullets all over the target. If you're going to shoot wild, you can get all your shots off in 30 seconds. But don't do it. When a recruit does, and then turns and finds an old timer beside him, just loading his second clip, well, he feels like a fool. Take it easy. There's no time to pick daisies, but there's plenty of time to fire 16 shots and get 16 bullseyes. And remember, even 12 bulls are better than 16 threes. So, don't get excited. Slow and careful. That's the rule that brings in the high scores on the range. And it's the rule that mows them down in battle. Up to now, we've been discussing the pupil and what he does. Now let's look at the coach. In rapid fire exercises, he's got plenty to do and not much time to do it in. In addition to his other duties you already know about, he makes sure the pupil takes his position quickly and without waste movement. That he takes up the trigger slack with one decisive action and squeezes the trigger correctly. Hold. 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 That he breathes after each shot. Hold. Hold. That he keeps his finger on the trigger. Hold. Hey. And that when he reloads from the belt, he doesn't fumble. Hey. 
The moment the hammer falls, the coach throws the operating rod handle back sharply and gets his hand out of the way. In rapid fire, the coach is the key man. He's got to know his stuff and keep his eyes open. If he's on the job, he can help his pupil a lot. And himself even more. Any questions on rapid fire? All right, let's sum up. Rapid fire is slow fire speeded up a little. In rapid fire, just as in slow fire, you take the right position, hold your breath and aim properly, and squeeze your trigger smoothly, even if you take a little longer than you should. Speed? Yes. We count the seconds you take, and we work you against the stopwatch. But speed is worse than useless, unless you do everything right every time you do it. Take it slowly at first, and make every movement exactly as you should. Speed will come of itself. And it won't be long before the right way is the natural way for you. The only way. Then, when you find yourself in a tight spot in battle, you won't lose your head and blaze away wild. That's the quick way to the cemetery. And for my money, a good soldier is a live soldier. Dependable habits will make you calm and cool and confident, and you'll hit what you're shooting at. That's pretty important, when what you're shooting at is shooting at you. Thank you.